everyone. Welcome to the Mufasa book readings. My name is Julia, and today's reading will be reading from the book by Mal Robbins. The book is titled The Five Second Rule. Enjoy. Chapter seven. You'll never feel like it. It takes courage to grow up and become who you really are. E.E. E. Cummings. It's a hot afternoon in Plano, Texas and a woman named Christine is sitting in a meeting at work. Her boss has called the meeting to discuss ideas to help close a massive piece of consulting business. It's down to two companies and the decision will be made next week. Christine is listening and taking notes when suddenly she thinks of an out of the box idea. What if we create a custom Snapchat geo filter and tag it to the prospect's office building. Everyone at the building using Snapchat will see it and that will create buzz about our company. Her mind starts to race with all kinds of things that they could do. The conversation among her colleagues is winding down and the VP of business development says, these are great suggestions. Anyone else? Christine has a decision to make and she'll make it in the next five seconds. She knows she should jump into the conversation, but first she stops to think, is this going to sound crazy? No one else suggested anything even close to this kind of thing. She shifts in her chair. Is there a reason no one else has mentioned Snapchat? Now she's questioning whether she should share the idea at all. In the next five seconds, Christine will either decide to say something, to say nothing, a pattern that became a habit at work, or she will find the courage to speak up. Plus, Christine has a goal. She wants to advance in her career and is worried she's going to get passed over for more senior roles if she doesn't improve her executive presence. She's been spending a lot of time figuring out what she needs to do. And she wrote to me because she was struggling with her ability to make herself do it. Her confidence is taking a nosedive. She has devoured fantastic books like Lean In, Tribes, Daring Greatly, and The Confidence Code. She has attended women conferences, listened intently to her mentor, and practiced power posing in a mirror at home. Thanks to all this research and reading, Christine knows what she needs to do. Share strategic ideas, be proactive, lean in, be more visible, and volunteer for projects that stretch her. And she knows why she needs to do these things. You're probably wondering why on earth Christine just didn't speak up when she had the chance. Great question. The answer is simple. She's losing the battle with her feelings. Christine isn't struggling with speaking. She's struggling with self-doubt. Of course, Christine knows how to speak in a meeting. What she doesn't know how to do is beat the feelings that are stopping her. If you've ever wondered why it's so hard to make yourself do things that you know will solve your problems and improve your life, the answer is simple. It's your feelings. None of us realize it, but we make almost every single decision not with logic, not with, not with our hearts, not based on our goals or dreams, but with our feelings. And our feelings in the moment are almost never aligned with what's best for us. Take Christine as an example. She knows what's best for her, to speak up. In the moment, however, her feelings are making her second guess herself. Study after study shows that we opt for what feels good now or feels easier rather than doing the thing we know in our hearts will make us better in the long run. The moment that you realize your feelings are the problem, you now have the ability to beat them. Look at how quickly Christine's feeling rose in that meeting in Plano, Texas. In less than five seconds, self-doubt started to fill her mind. It happens to all of us. 
And once you understand the role feelings play and how you make a decision, you will be able to beat them. Here's what you need to know. You make decisions based on how you feel. We like to think we use logic and go or consider our goals when we make decisions, but that's not the case. According to neuroscientist Antonio Damasio, it's our feelings that decide for us 95% of the time. You feel before you think. You feel before you act. As Damasio puts it, human beings are feeling machines that think not thinking machines that feel. And that's how you ultimately make decisions based on how you feel. The Marcio studied people who had damage to their brains and couldn't feel any emotions at all. And he discovered something fascinating. None of his research subjects could make a decision. They could describe logically what they should do and the pros and cons of the choice but they couldn't actually make a choice. The simplest decision like deciding what to eat were paralyzing. What Damasio discovered is paramount for you to understand. Every time we have a decision to make, we subconsciously tell you all the pros and the cons of our choices and then make a gut call based on how we feel. This happens in a nanosecond. That's why none of us catches it. For example, when you ask yourself the question, what do I want to eat? You are actually asking yourself, what do I feel like eating? Similarly, I wasn't asking, should I get up? Subconsciously, I was asking, do I feel like getting up? Tom wasn't asking, do I want to walk over to her? Subconsciously, he was asking, do I feel like walking over to her? Christine was doing the same thing at work. She wasn't asking, should I share my idea? Subconsciously, she was asking, do I feel like sharing my idea? Huge difference. And that explains why change is hard. Logically, we know what we should do, but our feelings are doing it our feelings about doing it make our decision for us. Your feelings will make the decision before you even realize what's happened. How you feel in the moment is almost never aligned with your goals and your dreams. If you only act when you feel like it, you will never get what you want. You must learn how to separate what you feel from the actions that you take. The five second rule is a remarkable tool in this regard. The moment you feel too tired, you decide not to go for a, while, a run. But five, four, three, two, one, go, and you could make yourself go for one. If you don't feel like attacking the to-do list on your desk, you won't. But five, four, three, two, one, go, and you can force yourself to start working on it. If you don't feel worthy, you'll decide not to tell them what you truly feel. But five, four, three, two, one, go. You could make him, you could make yourself say it. But if you don't learn how to untangle your feelings from your actions, you'll never unlock your true potential. Here's how feeling keeps you from changing. When you stop to consider how you feel, you stop moving toward your goal. Once you hesitate, you'll start thinking about what you need to do. You'll weigh the pros and the cons, and you'll consider how you feel about what you need to do. And you'll talk yourself out of it. I have said it before, and I'll say it again because it is so important. You aren't battling your ability to stick to a diet, execute a business plan, repair a broken marriage, and rebuild your life. Hit your sales goals or win over a bad manager. You are battling your feelings and doing it. You are more than capable of doing the work to change anything for the better, despite how you feel. You can't control how you feel, but you can always choose how you act. Ever wonder how pro athletes achieve so much? Part of it is talent and practice, but another key element is a key, is a skill that you and I need in our lives. The ability to separate from our emotions and push our bodies and mouths to move. 
they may feel tired as the football game drags into the fourth quarter, but they don't act tired. Feelings are merely suggestions, ones the greatest athletes and teams ignore. To change, you must do the same. You must ignore how you feel. And as Nike would tell you, just do it anyway. Thank you so much for watching our video. Don't forget to like, comment, share to your family and friends, as well as subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Thank you so much. Bye.